Hi, so you bought your new flooring, you're ready to go. You pull back the carpet and you found out there's particle board under there. Can't nail flooring to that, it's gotta go. Hi, welcome to U-Floor Flooring Tips and Tricks. My name is Anon Hunt, I'm your host. Today we're gonna to be talking about installing hardwood on particle board. Can't be done. There's a lot of things you can't do when it comes to nailing down hardwood floor, but driving staples through particle board is absolutely a no-no. I learned a long time ago that with particle board, what ends up happening is it's basically just glue and sawdust that's been glued together. So when you drive a staple down through it, it'll tend to swell out where the staple goes through and over time when people are walking on that uh, it can tend to make the staple work loose it doesn't give good grab on it and so you could have problems later on down the line also it's very porous so it does soak up a lot of moisture and i'm not talking about if you spill something is it going to get wet i'm talking about if you have a good rain and you don't have the proper vapor barrier underneath your house, all that moisture underneath can come up through the subfloor. And if you have particle board on there in between what's going on in your floor, it can definitely make that swell and you'll also have problems with that. So what you don't want to do is you don't want to nail down or you don't want to glue down three quarter inch hardwood down to particle board. It's absolutely got to go. I know it's going to cost you a little bit more in the end, but it's going to be worth it. You're going to have to tear it out and you're going to have to replace it with real plywood. If you're laying hardwood floor and you've encountered some particle board, we're going to show you today what it's going to take to get that stuff out and get you back on track with your project. So stay tuned. Okay, so when we get referrals and the customers bought their wood and ready to go, we don't always get to check the subfloor until we arrive. When pulling them back the carpet to check the moisture on this job, I realized it was particle board. So we had to make a few calls, check with the customer, and after he agreed to pay additional charges, we decided to tear out the particle board and replace it with real plywood. We put everything on one side of the room so that we could wrap it with plastic to keep down with dust because this can get dusty. And then we started tearing out the carpet. Now, if you're tearing out the carpet, you don't always have to tear it out in one big giant piece. That makes it kind of hard to get out. You can roll it up into these four or five foot rolls. And I made a video on how to do this one time, but basically I'm just taking my roll and cutting a little tail and two little slits. And I wrap it up underneath there once. And then I wrap it around again one more time to give me something like a loop to stick it through. And I stick it through that loop and I pull it tight just like a necktie and I can carry it out like a suitcase out the door. It makes it a lot easier. You don't scratch up walls and stuff like that. Next, you're gonna have to remove the tack strip. That's what we did. Now, this is one way you can do it with a pry bar. You need to take the pry bar and make sure you're going underneath the nails that are nailed through the floor. That'll make it easier to pull up in one piece instead of small pieces. Now, if you do this for a living and you haven't picked up on this trick, a shingle shovel will make life a lot easier on you when pulling tack strip. Next, I took a nail puller. We call this a cat's paw in framing, but basically it's a pointed nail puller so you're able to dig down into the particle board and pop the nails. It had a lot of eight penny nails, so it took us a while because I only had one nail puller. After lunch, Kelly went and picked up another one so that we could both work on pulling nails and get this plywood out. It took quite a while because as I said, there were quite a few nails, but we stayed true to the task and we got her done. There was a lot of nails. We're halfway done. We got all the plywood removed from one side of the room and now we are working on the other side. It took us almost half the day to get this plywood out. So if this is something that you're going to have to do, keep in mind, it's gonna take you a while if you wanna do it right. Whew. After all the plywood was out, it was time to cut or measure and cut the new plywood and start installing it. We hit another small roadblock 
Turns out it's gonna take more than just two small boxes of screws to get this job done. So I pulled 16 inch centers and I drove eight penny nails into all the floor joists to hold them until Kelly got back with a whole box of screws. I shot back in between pieces of plywood to make sure there was no debris. Then I laid the next sheet down and drove hand drives in it. We stayed like this until Kelly came back with the screws. On day two, we finished screwing off the plywood and I got Kelly and Jared started laying the hardwood floor while I made it my personal task to tear the particle board out of the hallway. The homeowner decided to help me carry the plywood out. I could tell he was a little bit restless, so I didn't mind. Next, I cut all the doors in. I noticed in the doorway there was a small dip right there, so I had to cut a few shims to build that up before I laid the next piece of plywood in to make sure that it was flat. Now when starting the first couple rows of nail down hardwood, what I do is pull a random number off the wall, say 36 inches, and make two marks at each end of the room, and then I pop a line. I lay my first board about 3 sixteenths to a quarter of an inch off the wall to allow for expansion, and then I pull my tape measure from the face of the board to my line, not to the tongue of the board. Looking at these two boards, you'll notice that some of the tongue is missing off of the top one. It's okay and will still lock in, but this is not what you want to use to measure off of because it can throw you off of your line. That is why I like to pull from the face of the board back to my line. It gives me a good number. In this case, when I butt the face of the board that I have pulled off the wall a quarter of an inch, I have 40 and 5 eighths. So in order to keep my first row straight all the way, I will butt the face of every board and measure to my line 40 and 5 eighths and then nail it. Now I'm nailing just on top of the tongue where the floor staple was going to be going in and across the back. Quarter round should be covering that later on, so no need to worry about it. Once I got the first row nailed all the way across, I cut some small shims and stuck them behind the boards to hold them off the wall so that when I hit the boards with the mallet, it doesn't drive them back. I put the shims right behind my nails that I've shot to the face. The first couple of rows had to be nailed with a 16 gauge brad nailer as the floor nailer wouldn't fit against the wall. But once we got that going, it was off to the races. I left Kelly and Jared to nail off the floor while I finished working on the hallway I mentioned earlier. I got all the plywood cut and laid and finished screwing it off. Kelly and Jared made a lot of progress. They were moving along and it was almost time for lunch. When I finished installing the plywood in the hallway, I came in to help rack out the rest of the floor so Kelly could continue nailing. Racking out a room just means that you are laying all the boards down on the floor in the way that they are going to be nailed down later. I like to lay everything out and then turn a board around backwards at the end, but I don't cut it just yet. Sometimes you'll run into boards that are warped or twisted and they'll have to be pulled and that will mess up your row. So after you fix it and you have about two or three that are nailed, I like to take two or three and turn them around backwards and cut them all at once in an effort to be more efficient. The rest of the install goes pretty much the same. We just keep laying boards out in front of Kelly so that she can keep on going nailing. Now on day three, you'll notice something different. First of all, we went and rented another floor nailer from Home Depot to speed things along. Also, I got a fresh new haircut. We moved all of the furniture from one side of the room onto the floor that we already installed. That way we could continue on with progress. And, just like before, it's pretty much rinse and repeat. 
Nail one row, come back and start the next. The last couple rows are just like the first couple rows. The nail gun will not fit because of the wall, so you have to use a 16 gauge brad nailer to nail into the tongues of all the boards. Also, you do you remember the cat's paw we bought earlier? I learned this trick back in framing too. If you'll take it and drive it kind of into the floor a little bit, you can use it as a pry bar back so you can pull the boards tight against each other to get your nails in there. I'll put one nail in here just to get it secured, but you'll notice as I'm nailing, I'm putting my hand on top of the gun. That's because the gun will bounce off and ricochet against the wall and leave these little black marks all over the wall. And you don't want that. You'll have to repaint the customer's house. Now the last two rows can't even be nailed through the tongue with a 16 gauge brad nailer. So what you're going to have to do is pry your boards tight together and face nail the back. Sometimes the back two rows. You can always putty those later and quarter round will cover the nails in the back. Okay, so we finally made it to the hallway. What I did was I found the straightest board and I used it to be the one coming out of the doorway and I used a straight edge to go all the way down the hall to make sure that the first row was very straight. I took another board and placed it behind it and screwed it down to the floor so the one that I straightened would not move. And then I started nailing all the other boards into that. It took a minute to get it straight, but it is so worth it. You don't need any problems later. Then the rest of the crew came into the hallway to help me wrap it up. And here's the finished product. Hope you guys enjoyed watching. Don't forget if you haven't hit the subscribe button already, go ahead and do that. Also hit the notification bell so you can be notified whenever I put a new video out. And if you wouldn't mind, Hit a like on this video and also share it with others to help our channel grow. Once again, we do appreciate you watching and thank you very much.